The top comment when I started writing this was for Hairstar, and uh, it still is. <laughs> Good. Hairstar is the current leader of WindClan. I use him as this whiny, funny guy in the short videos. I like making him into a massive loser. This isn't unfounded, I promise you. But as usual, Magenta Sphinx is now in Moon Kitty Comment Purgatory. They can still comment, but their suggestions cannot be taken. Farewell, Magenta Sphinx. Hairpaw materialized in Arc 3 alongside Kestrel Paw and... Is it Kestrel? Kestrel. Kestrel. Yes. <laughs> Hair Hairpaw materialized in Arc 3 alongside Kestrel Paw and Heather Paw of WindClan. There are no queens at the time, so they all could have really come out of basically nowhere. Um, not Breezepaw, who was around at the same time. He came out of Crowfeather. A questionable retcon makes one star into Heathertail's father, something that will probably be acknowledged eventually, although it's hugely weird that it didn't come up in Arc 6 if the authors truly knew about it. This retcon, from what I understand, didn't mention Hairpaw or Kestrelpaw at the time, but I think it's most interesting if we're to accept it as canon, as much as I don't want to, if Kestrelpaw and Hairpaw aren't related to her or each other. Well, okay, I'm more concerned with if or not Hairstar is related to either of them. If Heather and Kestrel turned out to be siblings, it doesn't bother me, because it doesn't really add any nepotism where there wasn't any. I mean, making your kid the medicine cat apprentice could be argued as nepotism, but let's not get into it. The idea of Kestrel and Hair being siblings adds, like, a dynamic to the leader medicine cat relationship, and it also adds nepotism, and obviously making one star his dad dilutes the story a little bit. And it would certainly be mentioned in Crowfeather's trial if it was the case. On top of all of this, Hairspring is probably a little bit older than them, as he becomes a warrior before anyone else does. So Hairstar materializes out of the void in Series 3. He's an apprentice alongside Breezepelt. And you might go, wait, Breezepelt is Hairstar's age? Hairstar is Breezepelt's age? Hairstar is Lion Blaze's age? Heathertail's Willow Shine's younger than Berry Nose? And the answer is yes. He is a leader, but he is a baby. His deputy, Crowfeather, is older than him, but a father to characters in his generation. He only really shows up two significant times as an apprentice. In Dark River, he chases a squirrel over the ThunderClan border with Breezepaw. Yeah, squirrel dispute time. I swear squirrels are responsible for 80% of cat violence in this series. They must have evolved over the years with the specific survival strategy of crossing clan borders when they're being chased. And he acts a bit confident here, surprisingly, despite all of his later appearances. He talks a bit too much about WindClan's struggles before Tornier tells him to shut up. Later on, during the battle with WindClan, he's only there as a body to fight, but we have a silly little line where Hazelpaw, of all people, yells, Run back to the nursery, hair kit, while he runs away from her. Yeah, that's right, the future leader of WindClan got his butt handed to him by little baby Hazeltail. He seems to get his warrior name between Dark River and Outcast, and he's pretty much just a generic WindClan patrol member throughout the rest of Power of Three and Omen of the Stars. We hear that he was training in the Dark Forest from a small comment that One Star makes, then we see him there exactly once before the battle starts. He does not do anything. He's suddenly deputy at the start of Dubwing Silence, even though he's only like two years old at this point. He's tiny. Additionally, even though he was in the Dark Forest in the last book, the only Dark Forest warrior One Star takes to the meeting is Breeze Pelt. Hairspring isn't even mentioned in the body of the book at all. It's the book Crowfeather's Trial where he suddenly becomes a character, despite being probably half the age of Crowfeather at the time, and it adopts a role of responsibility. And over the course of the book, Crowfeather goes from being extremely jealous of him to eventually respecting him. There's a bit near the beginning where Hairspring suggests warning ThunderClan about the Stoke problem and gets turned down. Crowfeather notes that he still looks doubtful after the exchange, which kind of gives us the idea that Hairspring is willing to kind of sit back and allow one star to do what he wants even if he doesn't agree with him. There's another bit, later on, where the book contrasts their personalities. Crowfeather is prickly and stern, while Hairspring is a lot more lenient and friendly. Please, Hairspring, can Hoopa and I hunt together? Featherpaw asked as the deputy padded towards her and Crowfeather, who gave his apprentice a stern look. That's not for you to decide, he scolded. Featherpaw didn't seem bothered by his rebuke. She kept a hopeful gaze fixed on Hairspring. I don't see why not, Hairspring mewed kindly. I'll go tell Gorsetail and find a couple of other cats to go with you. Crowfeather was just about to tell Featherpaw that an apprentice's job was to do as she was told and keep her mouth shut, but he heard a low-voiced murmur from behind him, which I'm not going to read. Crowfeather absolute monster moment aside, I think it's telling of Hairspring in comparison. 
Something nice about this book in regards to Hairstar specifically is that we don't need to worry about Hairspring's character being modified by it. This is where we discover who he is, because beyond being someone who was trained up by the Dark Forest, all we know about the guy is that he could get beat up by sweet baby Hazeltail. He shows this sort of leniency again later when pushy apprentices and crow feathers convince him to let them train for the upcoming battle even though they won't be participating. The most telling bit in this book, however, is a moment where Crowfeather sizes him up. Crowfeather has just had a fight with One Star, and he turns to Hairspring to try and get him on his side. Hairspring refuses, saying that it's his job to back up One Star, and Crowfeather finds him to be unwilling to oppose his leader because of his disloyal background. I can't do that. Hairspring's eyes stretched wide and his tail bushed out with shock. I'm loyal to One Star. It's my duty to see my clan leader's orders carried out. Even if your clan leader is being mouse-brained? Crowfeather knew that there was no point in speaking his thought out loud. This is what comes of making a dark forest cat deputy. Hairspring was so desperate to prove his loyalty that he didn't dare put a paw wrong. Instead of making One Star think about his decisions, even if he eventually had to accept them, he was following where One Star led without question. Over the course of the book, Crowfeather seems to grow to respect Hairspring despite his inexperience, and it honestly must be weird to be overlooked in favor of a deputy the same age as your son. Later, in a confrontation with Bramblestar, Hairspring is easily overpowered in a conversation with him, and to be fair, at that moment he's begging for help, so it's not exactly like he has a chance to be assertive. A lot of what we see of Hairspring here is through the lens of Crowfeather's jealous biases. He initially sees him as less capable, partially because he's a dark forest cat who wants to prove himself, but also partially out of spite. Crowfeather thought himself to be a better choice for the position. Hairspring, being a two-year-old deputy, didn't even get to become a senior warrior before assuming the position, which is a rarity in warrior cats. He doesn't have a mate, he doesn't have any visible family, he is very isolated from the other cats in his clan. In Bramblestar's Storm, he is only mentioned in passing as the new deputy, with no real description or personality to speak of. The other cats don't really bother to mention that he's so young, probably not in small part because the authors didn't really think about choosing him that hard. He was chosen arbitrarily, seemingly, but again, that doesn't mean we can't make something of it. Despite how he was acting in Crowfeather's trial, by the time Thunder and Shadow rolls around about two years later, the now four-year-old Hairspring is willing to go behind his leader's back to share herbs with Shadow Clan. This endears him to Alderpaw, who is, quote, impressed by his compassion and sense of duty to the clan cats beyond his borders. When confronted by One Star over this, he simply says, I could not let a clan die. After he's made leader in Darkest Night, there are a lot of little tells of Hairstar's unease. He thickens the patrols after a few signs that something bad might happen, and later in the book, Alderheart, while trying to find the Six Toad Cat, mentions he might have accidentally strengthened his anxiety. He doesn't really do much for the rest of A Vision of Shadows. The attention really just kind of drifts over to Shadow Clan and Sky Clan after this point. During the Broken Code, he initially shows a lot of trust in Shadowpaw and opposes Imposter Bramblestar, even accusing him of bullying. But he eventually succumbs to the Imposter's plot and exiles Crowfeather, partially out of a long-standing respect for Bramblestar, but also, it becomes apparent, because of anxiety and de desperation surrounding the absence of Starkland. During the Big Veil of Shadows battle, Lion Blaze kills him, losing largely because he's exhausted by the time they fought, and dying because Lion Blaze has a problem. Briss even yells at her grandfather to stop, but she's, like, too late? <laughs> Besides Bramblestar, he's the only leader to die while StarClan is missing, but unlike Bramblestar, Hairstar doesn't get possessed. Uh, that's not really weird. Ashfur was the only cat who knew how, and probably can't be in two bodies at once. Even after all of this, he's still one of the leaders that believes in Proster Bramblestar might have been right about the code breaking and punishments, seeing as StarClan is still missing. After learning this, Rootspring seems to think that seeing a faded, distant Star Clan has made Hairstar seem haunted. As in haunted by it. In Darkest Night, Hairstar is determined to do what he believes is the right thing, but he's still showing traits of cowardice, occasionally taking a back seat when the other leaders are arguing, initially looking at the ground when the idea of killing Bramblestar is brought up in front of Squirrelflight. Later in the book, however, he becomes much more emboldened about this idea, especially having Tigerstar the second of the same opinion, and lobbies heavily for the killing of Bramblestar's body. He seems to only get more desperate for resolution once the imposter escapes in the place of no stars, being uncharacteristically aggressive with Tigerstar over him protecting Shadow Sight, and losing his patience with the others at one of the billion Moonpool meetings. In which book he also mentions his involvement with training in the Dark Forest, which embarrasses him. It's implied he taught some of the other cats how to dream into the Dark Forest later as well. 
in the most recent book, he's just considerably less important. The one, imp like, telling character moment I could mention is that he takes offense together with Tigerstar at the implication that the Dark Forest trainees were bad. Overall, he definitely gets more bold as the Broken Code goes on. He even gets angry enough with Tree to go, how dare you, before immediately looking away in shame when Tree beats him with logic. And I might have missed a few scenes in this little recap here, but I really feel like it does paint a good enough background character picture for us to grasp something with him. I'm ignoring authorial intent here because we don't really know how much of this character the author really intended. Instead, I'm looking at what sort of narrative I can string together. Starting with the fact that Hairspring was a Dark Forest trainee. We're not really sure why, just that he was one. And I'm going to propose a small reason. Hairstar is a wimp. He's non-confrontational, easily pushed around. Even when he is speaking up for himself, somebody is telling him to shut up. Joining the Dark Forest could have been a way to fix that, especially when the apprentices in his generation, like Breeze Pelt and Heathertail especially, are a lot more assertive. When One Star needed to look like he trusted the Dark Forest trainees, Hairspring was picked, despite his inexperience. Hairspring, both a bit weak-willed and eager to please, spends his early time as deputy agreeing with him and backing him up, but slowly learning to stand up for what he believes is right instead. While it does seem like he wasn't deputy for very long, he's actually a couple years in when he becomes leader, due to a pretty heavy time gap between Omen of the Stars and A Vision of Shadows. This doesn't stop him from being coming leader at like four and a half years old though, making him like the second youngest leader after Tigerstar the second, but just by a bit. He may not have a canon family or a mate, but he shows a lot of compassion for the other Dark Forest trainees, having been one, and seems to have at least some sense of camaraderie with Tigerstar II, and honestly, why wouldn't he anyways? The other three leaders are leagues older than them, and they might as well be comfortable with each other. He also seems to not be a super strong fighter, having lost basically every fight he's ever been involved with. Losing to Hazelpaw, losing a life to Lionblaze, Dark Forest training or not, he's... <laughs> Not great. Which is fun. Yeah, you could beat up this Warrior Cats leader. But despite this, he seems at least reasonable and malleable. He doesn't seem stubborn, and if we have anything right now, it's four stubborn Warrior Cats leaders and one Hair Star. And I do have a bad feeling going forward. Hairspring is probably going to be used super situationally. If you need a cat to be aggressive at the ThunderClan border, I'm sure they'd be willing to use him as a one-star too. Or have him act unreasonable at a gathering now that we're actually going to be in Misty Star's clan and she can't do it for once. I can definitely see this kind of weak-willed but well-meaning character in Hairstar, and that doesn't really mean that that's what was supposed to be there, but I guess we'll see going forward what they decide to do with him. Anyways, as usual, comment below telling me what you want me to talk about, and I will make a video in a couple weeks at, about the top suggestion, as long as it isn't one of these characters. Boom-ba-da-dim-boom-boo! -ba -da See ya!